Good morning, everybody. We are going to be doing a short tutorial on PhotoP. Now, I'm going to continue using the file that I was demonstrating in class, so I need to open from computer. If you're just starting at new, you're going to go to new project. Um, it's arbitrary. We just knew that we wanted it a square dimension because we were making an avatar that will fit in a circle. So you would name your project with your name. Um, and I would recommend just your initials for this online application. You don't want to give them any more information about yourself than is necessary. And uh, we went with a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. And because it was meant for the web, we're content with 72 pixels per inch. And you'd say create. Okay, so all the things would be going on in here, and your layers would begin to add up in this layers palette. Going back to uh, what I went to, I would need to open from a particular location. Now this was just down into my downloads, but uh, I hope that you guys find an important way to organize it. I have st oops, I've stashed my stuff in the media art in folder and in uh, assignment one animal avatar. So when you guys are at school, you can hand things into the different assignment folders that are here. So squirrel face opens and I'll have a bunch of different layers to work from. So I would locate the um, picture of myself. Right now the visibility is turned off. I can click the visibility on. That looks messed, eh? Uh, and what I'll be taking off of here is the nose. Now, it's not a great picture to use to combine with this squirrel whose angle is on a 45 degrees looking to the left. So it's going to look crazy, but you know, the selection that you make is is uh, for your which picture you're going to use is pretty important. That shows that you've done done some thinking in advance. So here are some of the zoom strategies that you can use. You can hold down Alt and use your scroll wheel and zoom out that way too. You can hold down and of course stop this video and try it yourself. Control and space bar and uh, click with your mouse and drag in on a particular thing. So if I wanted to zoom in on this nose, if I click, I can drag in on it and out on it. Okay, that's control and space bar and dragging with your mouse. There's also, if you zoom in really close uh, on something and you want to go back out to full view you can press control zero and if you wanted to just nudge yourself towards it you can press control and the plus sign which is beside backspace on your keyboard so plus and then minus right beside it control minus will get, bring you back out okay and control zero again fits screen what I showed students in class were a few of the selection tools. Object selection we discovered was not easy to use, maybe because we're using complicated objects. Um, quick selection, in this case, just cutting out my nose, it's probably going to be best if I use the lasso tools. Magic wand was also really helpful. I'll demonstrate that. If you have a big clear background like this that you want to get rid of, magic wand with the correct tolerance can be very powerful at selecting all of this blue at once. So I just click once and it grabbed a lot of it. But you'll notice that the background blue is mottled in its appearance. So you'd increase the tolerance because you're confident that there's a big difference between this blue and this red, but not as big a difference between this light blue and this dark blue. So by increasing the tolerance, you're gonna communicate to PhotoP that you wanna have those blues thought of as the same and uh, this one was too light to be thought of as the same as what I originally clicked on, so that didn't get selected. But if you're in addition or unite mode, then you can add that part to the selection as well. Once you have an area selected with a magic wand tool or with a lasso tool, you can press Control X to cut that out and Control V to paste it into a totally new layer separate from the first and that can be modified independently. You can go to image adjustments and levels to change the values. So these lighter blues would be represented by this patch of pixels. These uh, darker blues would be represented by this midtone. And uh, the darkest blues that are on here would be represented by um, this big swath. You can slide these over, lighten the scene, change its mid-tone value contrast, 
and changes darkness level. And that's levels. You can also adjust things like the color in a level or in a layer, sorry, by hue saturation. The hue right now is blue, but you can change it to all sorts of different colors. The saturation refers to uh, how dull or how saturated something is. Be careful with making things look like neon slime and that kind of thing. And lightness is how light or dark something is. The lightness is kind of a blunt instrument. Uh, the stronger way to do that would be in curves or in levels. If your thing is black and white already, you can colorize it. You can also delete layers, like I don't need this anymore, by dragging them down to the garbage can. And uh, getting back to our nose. Okay, so we've got this nose that we've got to do. Uh, another technique is to hold down spacebar while you're zoomed in and drag yourself around a canvas space. So I've got this lasso tool. If you're using a mouse at home, you can um, make a pretty careful selection using a mouse. With a trackpad or with a, a touchpad, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, a feather refers to making a blurry edge to that. This time, feather a little bit, which means soften the edge of what I have uh, selected. So I'm making a new nose for the squirrel. You'll notice that this bunched in a little bit, which is that feather action. And I'm going to press Control X to cut it and Control V to paste it. I'll use my move tool to drag that around. If I just zoom out, I can zoom back in on that spot. And uh, this looks like it's facing a bit towards the left. In Photoshop and PhotoP, you can um, flip images by dragging their horizontal anchor in transform um, so you can flip layer horizontally that would make more sense if you don't want to have something get distorted so this looks more natural than the other way and then you can also increase the perspective by holding control um, while you've got a layer actually let's con conform uh, confirm that action make sure your transform controls are showing when you're using the move tool so click that yes we do want to show those and you can hold control on a, on one of these anchor points and change the perspective of that object. In this case, a nose. I want to make it look like it's kind of vanishing back into space, just like this squirrel's nose. The left side would be vanishing back into space, and the right side would be closer to the viewer. So that's a way to increase perspective. We might need to uh, make this uh, bigger. So I'm holding down Shift now dragging out from a corner so that it doesn't get too distorted. Rotate a touch and uh, press the check mark to confirm. Now this haze around the edge of it needs to be gotten rid of because it's looking unnatural. You could do that with the eraser and making sure that I'm in the nose layer. You can check which layer it is by clicking on and off these eyes. So that's the nose layer, layer 4. It would make sense for me to double click on the text and name it so I don't get confused again. And so with my eraser tool, I'm gently going to kind of scoot along the edge there, being careful not to get too far into the squirrel's um, body. And I did down at the bottom, so I'm going to try that again. It sometimes helps to change the opacity on a layer to know what is getting uh, how close you're erasing behind that layer that you're on. So click on opacity to drag that down and now when I scoot around the edge of the squirrel's nose I'll just delete what is in the nose layer. I know you can't see much of it right now because opacity is down by 28 percent but if we erase just along this edge I can see exactly where the squirrel's nose is and just erase all that extra stuff that might be there. Make nose go back to opacity of 100% and uh, I can soften this edge by changing the brush to a blurry edged brush, larger size, and uh, just kind of doing a few little adjustments to make it seem more natural. Control zero and of course yeah of course it's not natural but uh, it's looking maybe like more like it fits in that in that scene. 
Okay, so those are some of the functions of uh, adding. Um, actually, I didn't go into adding the uh, with lasso. So lasso has several different unite function, subtract. If you're trying to add to a selection, let's say I've got an area here and I mess up the selection. If I zoom in on that, I can refine that selection manually by um, subtracting areas that shouldn't be selected. Let's say I'm just trying to get some of this antler. So I don't need this part. That's part of a selection. I come around and I remove that. My feather is still on, so I should get rid of that back to zero. That's only if you want a blurry edge. My unite is basically like adding more to the selection. So I can re-add that stuff. Maybe be more careful with my selection. And then back and forth between add and subtract so that you're getting a crispy, clean, accurate selection. And that's the, the, the same thing with Magic Wand. You're going to be able to add and subtract from the selections that you start making in order to make uh, your selection as best as you can. That's what it's all about is, is the selection and your accuracy with it to make it look good. For those of you starting from scratch, you might want to find a picture on Google. Let's say a cheetah. We're at 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. So as you click on some of these, you'll see a preview if you hover over the image of how big it's going to be. That might not be bad. I'm just going to like maybe steal a little bit of texture from the uh, cheetah's spots. So I don't need... Um, this would be bad for that because it's blurry. Uh, this is, that's a pretty big image, but he's kind of far away. Just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use it. So I would right click on it. Sometimes it's helpful to open image in a new tab just to see what size it actually is. That's the biggest size it's going to be. And I can right click and say copy image. Back in photo P, uh, let me press control zero to get back out. I can press control D to deselect that selection as well. And I am going to edit and paste or control V okay this pasted as layer 4 I'm gonna name it cheetah cheetah spots and it should be at the top so it's covering over some of that other stuff I'm gonna erase most of it uh, the size can be adjusted here in Photoshop if you're using that you can use these square brackets near backspace and evidently in photo P as well so way too blurry Hardness needs to be much stronger um, so that I can just use some of that spot fat, um, texture. I think maybe the wisest thing for me to do would be to select an area of texture that I would want to include. Control X, Control V to paste, move that in to where I want it to go blend onto the squirrel's chest holding down shift so that it doesn't get distorted too much although I don't think anybody would notice the difference too much so let's put it here we are going to uh, again reduce the opacity on that so that I can see what I'm erasing around I'm gonna erase around this mouth not so big this time clearly and a hardness of 100. Actually, maybe a touch below that, 95. All right, I'm pressing square bracket right so that I can increase the size of this, ensuring that these cheetah spots don't cover over the mouth. In this area, you can see there's a sharp line, if I, sharp line between cheetah spots and not cheetah spots. That would make sense to, um, to uh, soften a bit. And I'm going to increase the size again, but decrease the hardness to get rid of this this edge. Your opacity doesn't have to be solid as well for when you're using the, the brush tool. You can go subtle with it. All right, so I'm going to hold Control and Alt and click on this layer 4. Increase the opacity. So just to see what is still there, Control. Alt and the eyeball means I only want to see that layer. 
and you'd press it again. Let me increase opacity to 100 for these areas. Yeah, so that's in this part too. So that's um, going to be the chest texture. I'm going to press Control Alt again on this eyeball to. Um, oh, that didn't work. So if it Control Alt and on that eyeball again doesn't work, then you got to click and drag down those different layers. I guess we don't need that or the moose. This funny layer of cheetah spots can be blended with the stuff behind it in this cool way. So you can do darken where it's going to darken the kind of match with the textures that are already there. Uh, you can do multiply. There's lots of different um, techniques and that'll almost give credit to the dark hair that is behind it so that it blends with that nicely. Okay, so these are called blend modes. If you wanted a picture of yourself, you'd have to also open in place from your documents. You know, maybe there's something that you've got on there that you want to include. Um, open in place, you locate yourself wherever your picture is, and then you can add your picture. Even PNGs come in. There's a cool artist named Luis Despont who um, does grid work. So, you know, maybe I could uh, include this as a... I don't know, cool like um, multiply layer that has this awesome texture in the background or something like that. Okay, so that's that's how you do work in Photopea. When you're done, if you've got a file and save as PSD, it'll go to your downloads. And then from here, it can be a show in folder and you can cut this out of this location, paste it into another location. You can upload it to your Google Drive by going to your Google Drive and um, going to new and file upload and that way it's easy to send back and forth between school and home and hand in.